Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 Builder Nation story, Climbing with Cliftonville with me, Daniel. It's part 36 today and we start the new week in style with what is definitely the biggest moment of the series. We play Rapid Vienna in a two-legged Champions League playoff round and if we win it, we are in the Champions League group stages. For the first time in this series, what an achievement it would be. And today we have the chance of making it happen. Just our fourth season as well. Incredible work really. So it's going to be a monstrous episode. If you're looking forward to it, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM20 content from this series. And keep your eyes peeled on the community page where we've got announcements for FM21. There's also a link to the Discord server and to my Twitter page where you can keep up to date with all of that as well. But thank you so much for your support with this one. We've got one league game to reflect on. We'll keep an eye on the transfer window in the nation. And we will play the big two-legged tie. Balamina off camera in between. But this is all about Champions League football. We could make the group stages. How on earth has this happened? But let's go and have a look at the schedule firstly. Because we have played one game off camera. Institute, last season's runners-up. They lost 2-0. It was a pretty close game in truth. Connor Crawford scored early on from the spot. Cal Naismith got a late one. Aside from that, a bit like the Glenarvan match, we were pretty uninspiring. And there is some worries for me domestically this year. Our backup team is probably slightly weaker than the previous season because we've chosen not to have loanies in the backup 11 and we've also got a few of those youngsters coming through. So the likes of Sammy Wilson is weaker than last year's backup. The same for Mark Lyons to Tyrick Mitchell. We do have to bear those things in mind. So hopefully that won't become a big issue but we'll see as the season goes on. I think we'll still win it pretty comfortably. If we have a look at the transfer screen, a few more that have rejected leaving the club. Cal Naismith, obviously the main one. And we have loaned out a couple of players to our feeder club, Queen's University. So no one of note really, but a few players going out on loan and just gradually easing down that wage bill. We get rid of 10 of them, we can get in a backup player. It does make such a difference. But let's have a quick look at the Dansky Bank Premiership, just so you can see after two games, Linfield actually ahead of us on goal difference. Colrain up there as well. Larn dropped three points already. They lost against Crusaders on the first day. So it doesn't give you much hope for the season for them, does it? Despite the big money spending every single season, it goes wrong. But if we have a look at transfers, absolutely nothing in the last week. It's probably been the quietest window since the series started. And I don't really understand it. The league coefficient's gone up. The league reputation's gone up. The sides that have got good players are professional. The two that were in Europe went further than last year. I just don't get it. So we'll keep an eye on that because I'm expecting two very busy weeks or there'll be a lot of disappointment around. But for now, it's all about Rapid Vienna. We took a look at them in the last episode. They've got a very good side. They've got the international goalkeeper, Streibinger. He's a very good player, much better than our keeper. We would love to have him. On 20 grand a week, worth 5 million. Ken Semmer is a Swedish international winger. Again, far better than any we've got at the club. We've got Adti Nubiu, the former Sheffield Wednesday striker. He's a quality player, a big target man. And something that we probably struggle with, we haven't got physical centre-halves. And I worry that that will have an effect here. And then Veda Urs is the under-21 international fullback for Turkey. A quality player, probably as good as our fullbacks, and already at 18 years of age, are making shockwaves in the game. The grade out players are just as good as ours. Look at that for Brummer, for example. Good finisher, good pace, good acceleration. He's got the lot. There's plenty of midfielders who are high quality as well. It does worry me a bit. I don't feel like we're stronger than this side, and normally I can see some hope in there. There are one or two players that are weaker, which does give us hope. One of the centre halves, not great. The right winger was a little bit weaker because he's a central midfielder naturally, although a very good one. So there are some things that we've got to take a look at. But let's go and get into the game. It's the only way of finding out. Celtic in the knockout round again. Rangers there. There's so many big clubs involved at this stage. We've avoided the likes of Shakhtar and Celtic, which is massive. But there's still quality opposition to come up against. We're very slight favourites. We're back at Windsor Park now for some reason. Over 7,000 fans in today. And we've got our first 11 back after being rested for the weekend. With the exception of one, Finley Robertson not quite back to fitness. So Jake Kane comes into central midfield. And aside from that, it's the first choice 11. And Shane Ferguson's still in because Middleton's not fit. But he's been playing all of the ties so far. So it means we've got Bazunu in goal. Nico Williams, the right back, really improving quite quickly now. 
McDonald alongside Shotton at centre half with Sirkin at left back. Kane and Matthew Smith in the middle. He's now wanted by Rotherham. What league are they in at the moment? Rotherham are League One. So I don't know that we've got to worry about losing him. He's only worth 100,000 still, which is a bit of a surprise. But he's a top quality player. I don't really want to let him go. Harvey Elliott's on the right wing. Now the best player at the club, officially already. A bit like Jack Clark last year. Shane Ferguson on the left. Great set piece delivery despite his poor star rating. And Hepper Murphy and Idar up front. Idar's just got the edge on rating, but both of them clinical deadly strikers. As we saw off camera, Crawford got that first goal of the season against Institute. He's still improving a little bit, and I'm hoping the professional deal will help him. So we'll keep our eyes peeled for that one. He's played one game for a Northern Ireland under-21s, scored a brace. Played one game for the first team, scored on his debut. He is a goal machine, and that's what he's made to do. So let's hope, if we need him, he can do it off the bench today. But fingers crossed we can avoid away goals, we can avoid defeat, and we can send Cliftonville into the Champions League. Won't be good for our self-esteem this season, but it'll be brilliant just to see us reach that stage and get that massive income in. It's a 3-4-3, the old Antonio Conte formation there. All of the real players in there, with the exception of... Oh no, the keeper's there. So the keeper, Semmer's left wing back, Ur's right wing back, Nuiu up front. They're a good side. Quality players in their correct positions this time. No more injury problems. This is going to be a really tough test. If we get through this, we deserve to be in the Champions League. But I've got a feeling we're going to need an advantage after the home leg. Into the first half we go. Let's see if we can cause another shock. As Prokop picks it up to Ken Semmer. The Swedish international fullback goes back to Krop. Inside again. Whitman finds Semmer. It's been a good start by the visitors. Semmer goes alone. Oh, it's a great volley. He deflected off one and it came back to him. And he thundered it against the side netting. Brilliant effort. The keeper had no chance if it was on target. But thankfully it goes just wide of the post. 0-0 after 15 minutes. But we've barely had a foothold in this game. Though we have got a chance on the right here. Nico Williams with a throw. It's an advanced position. Plays a 1-2 with Hepburn Murphy. But his cross is blocked to Kane. Back to Matthew Smith. He goes to Williams. Smith again. He's got Kane inside him. A left-footed player looking for a switch of play. is up towards the left wing, but Urza's brought it down to Brunner. And that's the thing if Matthew Smith goes, I guess. Kane is a natural replacement. As Brunner goes forward again, that is sensational. He has run from halfway inside his own half, gone up to the opposition 25-yard zone, and smashed a left-footed shot, rifled it into the roof of the net. And I think Champions League football's a bridge too far. This Vienna side is very, very good. And we've got the ball in our defensive area with Shotton. Into Kane in the centre circle. Beats one man. Just 10 minutes to the break now. Kane goes for it himself. Not quite the same outcome for him, unfortunately. But it is a good effort. It's a good run. We have had a shot on target as well now. But with five to the break, it's all Vienna. And although we've had some shots there, we've not seen them on camera. And I don't feel like we've got a foothold in this match. So we're, we're pretty resigned at the moment. If we don't come back and win this 3 or 4-1... We haven't really got a chance in the second leg. But Nico Williams is trying to change that here. To Harvey Elliott. Into Adam Idar, whose shot's blocked. Back to Ferguson who's cleared. Although we are missing a couple of first team players. We are competing. And that's a good sign as well. As Harvey Elliott gets it. His shot's blocked to Kane. He's got a man over on the right. But play safe to McDonald who finds Matthew Smith. Maybe one of his last games for the club. But can he make something special happen in this tie? Not today. It's five minutes gone in the second. And it's still 1-0 to Vienna. Despite our dominance since the half-time whistle. And we're back as Veda Urs picks it up at right back. Set up the first goal for Vienna. And they just look more clinical than us. On the counter, they're very strong. We've not really taken chances or created great ones. We've had lots of them, but not good chances. As Smith finds Kane in the middle. Brings it out of the centre circle. He's got two over on the left. The referee just keeps getting in the way there. Smith plays a 1-2 with him instead. Kane's got a chance to go right to Nico Williams. The wing back overlapping into the penalty area. Got to be a foul by Ken Semmer. We go into VAR, but it's got to be a penalty. The referee runs over to the screen. And this could be the lifeline we need in the tie. To get back on terms in the home leg is a must. If we're to have any chance in the away leg. Rapid Vienna wait nervously. We wait expectantly. Arms folded. We're sure this is a penalty. The referee has come back from the screen and a penalty is given. I have never seen any other decision in this game. And Adam Idar, after a poor hour, has got a chance to get us back on terms. 
And it's thanks to one of their most experienced pros. Idar's penalty straight down the middle. Hammers it in. The keeper dives. And Idar's seventh goal of the season makes it Cliftonville 1. Rapid Vienna 1. 25 minutes to get a winner. And as we haven't had much reaction from that, we are going to make some changes now. Shane Ferguson replaced by Cal Naismith. Arguably a slight improvement going forward. I'll leave the other ones five more, but I'm pretty sure I know what's coming next. But 70 minutes on the clock, and it's Rapid Vienna who've responded. Nuiu holding it up well, the target man. To Herman in the middle. Back to Prokop, the left centre half. Had a good game despite his booking. It's flicked down for Nuiu, 25 yards out. And it's just over the bar. It was a good effort. It was a good strike. But the keeper had it comfortably covered. 15 minutes left. Hepburn Murphy off. Connor Crawford, the goal machine on. Harvey Elliott's not had a great game either. And he's on a yellow. So I'm actually going to replace him, I think. Or am I? No. Mark Lyons on for Sirkin, who's been really poor. We'll drop him to the support duty we used last year. And hopefully that will shore us up a little bit. 1-1, one, one. can we find a winner? We've dominated the stats, but on camera, in highlights, Vienna have looked the better side. They're more clinical, certainly. As Herman switches to Zolna, it's a great volley off the post. Lyons is there to hack it for a throw, but I thought we'd conceded there. We deserve to, really, but we're holding on for one all. And although it's not a good result for us, it keeps us in the tie. It keeps us moving. It gives us an opportunity. Stoppage time it is. It's going to be 1-1. One, one. A good performance, but we've got a corner. We played two minutes over. Adam Idar heads just over the bar. What a way that would have been to finish the home leg. But one all on the night. Vienna are favourites for the second leg for sure. And a penalty saved the day. But it was a good performance. And again, we've competed with a brilliant side. So a good effort, not the best result. And we'll be back in a minute to see if we can cause shockwaves in the away leg. Fingers crossed. We are back for the second leg. A crucial Champions League decider against Rapid Vienna. One all after the first leg. It is on a knife edge. We've got Glenn Middleton back. Recommended for half a game. Finley Robertson fully fit. Both of those featured off the bench at the weekend. So before we get into the main event. Let's very quickly reflect on that game. Another pretty uninspiring performance to be honest. Daniel Hughes scored. Hit the post and had two clear cut chances saved. It could well have been a draw that game. Patrick McAllister, our former assistant, knows us better than many. And they've signed a couple of good players. So he's doing a good job for them. But we did creep out 3-1 winners. Connor Crawford with a brace. And Noah Daly, deputising up front, got a goal as well. Still struggles for Sammy Wilson at this level. We will have to keep an eye on that. But otherwise, it's all looking good at the moment. In fact, let's just get him working as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And hopefully in time, he'll improve there. He has got the natural attributes for it, and I'm sure he'll get there eventually. But we have got bigger fish to fry today, a massive occasion for the club. We have a chance to reach the Champions League group stages. We go away to Austria to play the mighty Vienna. We've already seen how good they are at our place, and they'll be trying again. Over 20,000 fans in at the Vienna Stadium. Oh, it's going to be difficult. Some slight news updates on the pitch. We've got Saul Schotten and Sean McLaughlin, who were very close at centre-half. McLaughlin's now equal this star rating. So whether we get into the group stage of the Champions or Europa League, we'll swap them round. So McLaughlin is our first choice centre-half. We've also got bigger interest in Matthew Smith now. Watford have come in for him. And they are fourth in the Championship. So as much as a Luton fan, I don't like it. If they offer over half a million, with Jake Kane already here, we probably have to let him go. So that's one out that could be done before the end of the month. There's interest in Sammy Wilson from Coleraine, but I don't really want to loan him out when he's going to be crucial, particularly if Smith's going. And a couple of other former injured players like Middleton, we've gambled, we've put them back in the side. So it is the same 11 that played last week, with the exception of Finley Robertson coming in for Jake Kane and Glenn Middleton coming in for Shane Ferguson. Both of those are on the bench. And then dropping out of the squad entirely is Cal Smith with the other one just being a straight swap between Robertson and Kane. So into the second leg we go. Can we do it? Can we reach the Champions League? Surely not. We're going to remind the lads there's no pressure here. I didn't actually see what tactic they were playing. Did we not get to see that? Or have I just skipped past it by accident? So 4-4-2. Four, four, so they've stuck the two up front. Bruno who scored that screamer in the first leg. Nuiu we know all about. Semmer's further forward, which will probably help him because... You know, he gave away a penalty when he was defending last time. They've got Urs back there. The skipper, the Austrian number one in goal. I worry for this. A three and a half star reputation side. 
And after a difficult home leg, this one's surely going to be tougher. But early on, we've got the ball by the right corner flag. Robertson crosses for Ida. Middleton has a shot block behind. That's a promising start. It sort of came out of nothing. Well, 26 minutes gone. As it stands, we're going out on away goals. But the stats suggest we're dominating. As Hepburn Murphy gets it on the right. Cuts it back for Elliot as we're surging forward again. Into Adam Idar. His shot's blocked by the last man. Idar challenged the second time but finds Middleton. Matthew Smith 30 yards out. Back to Finley Robertson. Chance to switch left but goes short to Smith. He switches wide. I don't think anyone will get there. It's out for a goal kick. But it's been a very good 27 minutes. Look at that. No shots on target for Vienna. Three for us. But we've certainly got a chance as we're coming forward again. Hepburn Murphy on the right wing. Cuts it back. Williams will get there. Find Smith out to Hepburn Murphy. Crosses in. It's blocked. Back to Nico Williams. Chance to cut inside. He finds his man Matthew Smith. He tries to play possession but he's going backwards. He's been forced away. Eventually gives it to Harvey Elliott. Quite a couple of games for him but gives it to Smith. Switch of play. It's headed away and here's Vedat Urs. He set up the goal in the away leg for them and he goes long over the top here. Saul Shotton heads down more than away. Whitman picks it up. Through ball to Brunner. Shotton wins it again. Back to Vazunu. Sensational defending. And this is going to be tight. I've got a feeling it's going to the wire, this one. Bazunu's clearance only finds Urs the right back. But he's given it away to Middleton with a poor touch. And Adam Idar's in here, left-hand side. Back to Matthew Smith, to Robertson. Chance to shoot. And it's comfortably wide, to be honest. Not the best strike in the world. But at half-time, I think it's going to be nil-nil. And the stats suggest we've got a chance here. I'm fairly encouraged by that performance. So we're going to tell the lads it's excellent. We're still going out on away goals as it stands. But we've got a chance. And that's all that matters as we keep going through the game. It's a goal kick. The Austrian international taking it for Vienna. Out to his centre half. Goes wide to Vedat Urs, the right back. He's got two inside of him. Tries to switch it. Finds Whitman. And he goes wide to the right. Brunner picks it up. Nuiu's in the box waiting. We know the threat he's got. But it's back to Urs instead. Finds Burkic. Inside to Whitman. Two men up there. They've still got that target man in the box. We've got to be careful of it. Whitman's going to go wide here. Vedat Urs with a chance to cross. He's got Nuiu in the box. He goes back instead. They're reluctant to cross despite Nuiu being in there. Here it is though. Urs on the byline into Nuiu. And he heads over. It was a brilliant opportunity. But it's over the bar. And as it stands, we're still in it. I mean, a goal for Vienna doesn't really make a difference. Just means one goal doesn't get us through. And we'll have to think about changes. 20 minutes to go. Middleton will come off. He's struggling for fitness. Shane Ferguson on for him. And the same with Kane for Finley Robertson. Adam Idar's been poor too. So Connor Crawford on for him. He'll switch with Hepburn Murphy in terms of duty. And with three changes made, we're back into it. 20 minutes to go. And we're still just one goal away. As Ferguson's got a free kick. We know about his delivery. Into the post. Is that a penalty? The man's gone down off the ball. I don't know who it was. Who's that who's gone down off the ball? The referee's going to the VAR screen. We said this earlier in the episode. I have never seen one of these that hasn't resulted in a penalty. Every time they come back and they point to the spot. And this could be the lifeline we need. If we get through on two penalties, that would be incredible. The referee's back. He's given a penalty. It's going to be Connor Crawford. Adam idar has gone off. And the kid has got a chance to get us to the Champions League group stages. He scores into the corner. Connor Crawford puts it in. Just 18 years of age. And he may have got his Champions League group stage football. One goal means extra time now. But it's highly unlikely we're going out in 90. A Sirkin puts it down the left hand side. Us going out on away goals cannot happen now. A shot and clears downfield to Shane Ferguson. Chance to really put some gloss on it. If we get a second, Vienna need three. And that's what we'll be aiming for. As Sirkin's coming in from the left wing. Tries to cross. It's a good block by the centre half. But a second time back to Jake Kane. Oh my words. What a way to score your first goal for the club. Jake Kane with a half volley from 30 yards. The commentary says, oh I say. And oh I say indeed. The Champions League group stages are coming to Northern Ireland. As Jake Kane, his first goal for the club, is an absolute screamer. What technique, what quality. And this is a dream come true. Clifton Villa going to the Champions League group stages. We've got that draw to finish off the episode. It's going to be a joy. And even if Vienna score here, they've got to get three. So nobody really cares. But as it stands, they don't score. They're going long. They're going direct. They're trying to score. 
but they're offside and it is going to be a 2-0 away win for Cliftonville, a 3-1 win on aggregate, a stunning performance, some stunning moments, a wonderfully composed penalty from Connor Crawford, a sublime first goal for the club for Jake Kane and now we celebrate Champions League group stage football. We're going to get battered every game, I'm pretty certain of that. But what a moment. I cannot believe it. I, I didn't think it would be this this much of a moment for me. But it is incredible. Zona's in. He may get a consolation here. They're cutting in from the left. It's a good block. And Harvey Elliott will bring it away. Hoofs it out for a throw in. The three minutes are up. The whistle should go any second. Where is it, referee? There it is. Cliftonville are a Champions League team. A 2-0 win at Rapid Vienna. A sensational performance on the road. And we've got to see the draw now. What a way to finish. We'll be back in a moment to see who Cliftonville of Northern Ireland will be facing in the Champions League group stages. £13 million of income. That's enough to fund Northern Irish football for 10 years. Incredible stuff. And we'll be back in a minute. What a moment. Well, there's a big signing. We'll have a look at that in a moment because Northern Irish football seems to be making big signings now. We've been waiting all window for it. But I'm starting to see some positives. Might make the last season interesting. We're seeded last for the Champions League groups. You would expect such. So let's get the first three out of the way. And then see what group we'd like to be in. Excuse the mouse clicking as we go through them. But we're just trying to get out to see what sort of groups there are. I mean look at some of those. Arsenal, Atletico Madrid, Dortmund. Manchester United, Real Madrid, Lazio. Oh, I can't look at any of those groups and think where we might get a point. Maybe Celtic because we beat them at home in the qualifying. Ajax probably weaker than some of the second place teams. That would be our preferred group. I mean, even in the fourth pot, we're with Gladbach, a team that we managed in the head coach. Rangers, Zenit, Monaco. Oh, this is ridiculous. Let's have a look. Group F, possibly a bit weaker. Sporting Lisbon, a side that you might be able to compete with. And we've drawn them. So Juventus, RB Leipzig and Sporting Lisbon are our opponents in the Champions League group stages. I do not know what to say. What an incredible moment in this save. We'll have a very quick look at the Northern Irish transfer window as there are finally some big players coming to the nation. But this moment should make a big difference. So let's have a look at the transfer window. Of course, deadline day will be before the next episode. But let's have a look at the done deals. So just a few transfers in the last week. Lan have started spending again. Justin McKee, a good young goalkeeper from Portadown. Only 16, but he's probably first choice. I'm guessing he's replacing Connor Mitchell. He's played three games in the Premiership this season. One for Lan, two for Portadown. He's a super young player. Good sign in that. They've also signed Stephen Black from Linfield. A young player with potential. Not quite there yet. Liam Nolan, who we had a look at in the summer, has gone to Crusaders. Just 27 years of age, a former under-21 international. Most famed for playing at Accrington, been at Halifax for a few years since. He's a good player. Really good signing at this level. And then if we look elsewhere, Ryan Brobble from TNS has gone to Glen Torren. Not quite as good, but a solid squad player. Again, under-21 international, and he's made an impact quickly there. So we are just starting to see some increase in quality. I mean, Liam Nolan, I don't think he goes to 27 to a Dansky Bank Premiership side two years ago. I think that is purely because of our doing. So I'm hopeful in the last week of the window, we'll see four or five more of them. And then we can continue to have a knock-on effect moving forward. But what an incredible episode. What a wonderful moment. We are in the Champions League group stages. If you did enjoy this episode, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM20 content from this long-term story, as well as weekly live streams and FM21 just around the corner. Loads of announcements over on the community page, on my Discord server and on Twitter if you want to catch up. And over on our podcast channel, we've done our Dansky Bank Premiership predictions for the season. The first weekend of fixtures has just gone in real life. And we've done a team-by-team -team guide and let you know where we think everyone's going to finish. But we will be back for one of these Champions League games. But what a moment for this football club. A change in schedule. The whole group's over by the middle of November. Oh, it's Winter World Cup year. I forgot about that. That's going to be interesting if we lose players to internationals. But I hope you enjoyed this one. A problem for later in the season, that. An incredible achievement for this football club. And I hope to see you next time for our Champions League group stage debut. <laughs>